Hello friends, looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 14th April. The news items picked up are these 15. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, US hits Afghan IS base with largest bomb. So this is a massive GBO-43 bomb, the largest non-nuclear bomb ever used in combat. So this has been dropped by US in eastern Afghanistan, where the series of caves which are used by IS militants are. So this has been dropped from a aircraft. So this is called mother of all bombs, GBU-43. So its weight is 21,600 pounds. That means 9,797 kg. So 1 kg is around 2.2 pounds. So this was first tested in 2003 and now it has been used. So this is there. The next is H1N1, 33 deaths in Pune, over 100 across the state. So you should know about H1N1. So it has claimed over 100 lives in Maharashtra. So this is the news. It's a swine flu virus, H1N1. So it has struck Maharashtra earlier too. The state had witnessed H1N1 cases in 2015, even last year. And this year, the deaths have increased fourfold compared to 2016. So this is there. So there are many cases recorded even during summer as several bouts of unseasonal showers negate the impact of higher summer temperatures that may help in curbing the spread of the virus. So this is the news. This is the H1N1 virus. So you can see the swine swine here means pig swine means pig the swine flu means pigs are the harbor of several flu viruses which infect birds humans and then they actually come to humans also by inhaling these viral particles humans get affected and human to human to transmission is possible so symptoms you can see high fever coughing sneezing loss of appetite so it may result in death as well then next is conduct meet in urdu in 2018-19 supreme court so this is the supreme court's order on the petition so this was a petition by urdu medium students they said that urdu is not the medium of language for need the national eligibility come entrance test which is made now compulsory by supreme court only we have seen this too for medical entrance exams so this urdu just say urdu is the language for unani medicines also it is studied in urdu so why urdu is not a medium of language so this from next year onwards it would be a medium of language that's the order of supreme court to center and cbsc so unani unani actually is a term which stands for yunan yunan was the term which india used for greece so which arabs basically used for greece so this means yunani means originating from greece only so this is the foundation of Yunani system. It was laid down by Hippocrates. So Hippocrates of Greece is the founder of Yunani system. It was introduced in India and spread as such by Arabs. So Arabs have strengthened it and India also has this system. So the various diseases for which there are treatments under this Yunani medicine system, ancient Greek medicine system. So it evolved within the Muslim world for the past 13 centuries. So it's the based on the concept of balancing body humors. So in Ayurvedic system also there are dosh. So there are three dosh as such which are, which are known. So in Yunani system there are four dosh. You can say four humors which are needed to be balanced. So this is the basis of the system. In Chinese medical system, traditional system, there are five elements which need to be balanced. So Ayurveda three, Yunani four, Chinese five. So these systems here, the four elements are earth, air, water and fire. And in nature, they are cold, hot, wet and dry. The four humors, the four natures, four elements and the four humors. The four humors are blood, phlegm, yellow bile and black bile. So these four humors so have to be balanced. Then next is court issues non-bailable warrant against Zakir Naik. So this is the Prevention of Corruption, Prevention of Money Laundering Act of Court. This has issued a non-bailable warrant. So he is presently said to be in way. So Enforcement Directorate had told the court that he had established various shell companies in India as well as abroad, abroad, where he had nominated directors who were not even aware of the activities of these entities. So that is the allegation against him. So National Investigation Agency has also registered a fire against Zakir Naik, the Islamic preacher. So, ED Enforcement Directorate has also attached properties worth 18.37 18 crores under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. So, money laundering, basically what it means, so Zakir Naik and this case particularly may not be important, but money laundering is an important topic in UPSC. So, money laundering means illegal dirty money is converted into legal white money. It means you show a different source. The actual source of money is something else. 
uh, illegal means it has been acquired but then you convert it and show it in such a way a shell company that this is the profit of this company so it becomes legal money so that is money laundering so illegal funds and assets are converted into legitimate funds and assets and this prevention of money laundering act of 2002 this is the framework under which india combats money laundering it came into effect from 2005 so these are rules imposed in that confiscation of property also as we saw the proceeds of crime can be done freezing of assets seizure is all allowed but, you know, mandated under this so this is the prevention of money laundering act which imposes obligation on banking companies financial institutions and intermediaries to verify identities of clients maintain records and furnish information to the to the investigating agencies so that is financial inspection so this is the prevention of money laundering act of 2012 amendment of 2012 so amendment now allows money laundering charges to be initiated even if the amount involved is less earlier the threshold was 30 lakh so if 30 lakh or more is involved then money laundering charges can be put economic offense can be made and another amendment is regarding the possession of proceeds of crime so even mere possession of proceeds of crime is an offense now so even if you're possessing that illegal money which is money laundered money then it is a threat so in rigorous imprisonment has been brought and no upper limit on fines now earlier it was an upper limit of five lakhs so that has also been removed and three years has become seven years of rigorous imprisonment the penalty the next is why no paper trial in paper trail in evms supreme court asked center so this we have seen quite often now so supreme court had ordered in 2013 that election commission should introduce paper trail in electronic voting machines so presently as the questions are being raised on evms whether they can be tampered or not so this becomes more important now. vv pat system so this is a vv pat system machine which has to be attached to evms so voter verifiable paper audit trail so this is vv pad so this helps in a uh, you know, print actually comes out when you press a button on the evm a print will come out and on that you can see and verify what party you voted is that correctly registered or not so this is not given to the voter it is placed with the authorities only and later if a recounting is required or any discrepancy is seen then it can be verified through this vv pad so that is the purpose of it the next is Karnan directs Supreme Court judges to appear before him. So this is regarding Kolkata High Court judge, Justice C.S. Karnan. We have been discussing him for some time now. So he has Suomoto charges, offense initiated, the case has been taken up before uh, Suomoto, contempt of court proceedings with the Supreme Court bench has initiated against him. So the seven judge bench has initiated these proceedings and now Justice C.S. Karnan is passing an order asking these seven judges of Supreme Court, including the Chief Justice of India, Justice Yes Kahar, to appear before him. So at his residence in Kolkata. So this is being done. He says that they are accused under the SC and ST Prevention of Atrocities Act. And that is why this initiation has been taken by him. So he has been defiant and this is the step taken by him. Next is Modi to honor 16 Orisha families tied to 1817 reward. So this is very important. Paika Re Rebellion of 1817, which took place in Kurda in Orisha. So here valiant, it was a valiant uprising of soldiers, much before revolt of 1857 too. It's completed 200 years now. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi is going to felicitate the descendants of 16 families too. So that is why this is very much in news. He had spoken about it earlier too on another occasion. So that is why a question may be asked on Paika Rebellion, where is it from? Or about the rebellion, it was an uprising of soldiers. So you should know these facts. It was led by this one, Buxi Jagabandhu. So it was Paika actually means these soldiers. So landed militia of Orisha, they were called these Paikas of this Kurda region in Orisha. So this is the word. Paika means a fighter or warrior. So this is an ancient term as such, this style of fighting. And of course, the rebellion was clamped down by the britishers it was quelled by september 2018 and after that the martial practices of orisha were also tried to be stamped out by britishers the next is rolls royce drdo to tie up so uk company rolls royce and indian drdo are going to tie up so steps are being taken in that direction so that steps uh, you know defense cooperation can be uh, brought in 
but rolls royce was actually charged of using middlemen means through corruption bribery it was trying to swing defense deals in india in its favor so this was the charges brought before it in london court and it had admitted to this and it had paid a hefty fine as well so still india would go ahead with rolls royce is a question so this is also there but india uk joint defense advanced defense cooperation is going on high end gas turbine engines co development cooperation would also take place air defense missile systems development would take place so the kaveri engine project which we have this is the aircraft engine so this we have faced troubles with it so now again it is being revived even in tejas the light combat aircraft we wanted to use this engine but it did not work so now we are trying to revive this too with france assistance from france then also india's first indigenous aircraft carrier is an advanced stage of construction so this is vikrant so ins vikrant was not indigenous that has been uh, no now it is not commissioned anymore decommissioned but then vikramaditya is the only aircraft carrier but we are now having a new vikrant which we are indigenously building so it's a ship which can carry aircraft so it's the first indigenous aircraft carrier of india then dtti we have already seen that is india us cooperation so jet indian technology development is being done under this also the next is india plans to buy three more scorpions so this scorpions are being developed between india and france so it's a diesel powered scorpion submarine so they are there's a deal the technology transfer deal in which mazgaon docks limited mumbai is manufacturing these scorpions so six such will be done so this is the company of france dcns which will provide the technology transfer to mazgaon docks limited so this was a deal signed in 2005 by 2020 it is expected all six submarines would be acquired and we want to planning to we are planning to buy three more scorpions also now. so first one is undergoing sea trial second has also been launched now so the names are also important the first scorpion has been named kalvari second is khangi so this is regarding that the next is cas may be forced to share info so the prevention of money laundering act which we just saw the amendment also which we saw central government is now further planning to have amendments done to is that the it would be mandatory to report suspicious transactions because presently client confidentiality is upheld for some professionals like cas and lawyers so they can't reveal about the clients but then the prevention of money laundering act will be amended to make it mandatory for them to report suspicious transactions so presently post demonetization it has been seen that these professionals have played a key role in protecting their clients so this is there then next is then this is the fiu which was mentioned there to in prevention of money laundering financial intelligence unit the next is trump limps lips on nato china so nato is a military alliance north atlantic treaty organization it comprises of 28 countries 25 are european countries so across the atlantic north atlantic so it's europe europe usa canada and even turkey is a member here so this organization was criticized by trump while he was campaigning for the presidential elections now he says it is no longer obsolete so i said it is obsolete now it is no longer obsolete that is his statement also he has reversed his position on china syria russia so in syria also he had stated that we should not get involved in the war and now he himself has initiated actions in syria direct attacks on syria then on the syrian president bashar al assad's camp where he said that this is from where the chemical attacks had taken place so direct action was taken in syria by trump on russia also earlier it was felt that he is pro russia but now again the fine stand against russia so he's coming to the us orthodox stands again now on china also his position now has changed because in this only it is there that in china also the trade dispute has been pushed to the back burner now earlier he was emphasizing on china the trade dispute and the exchange rate as such with respect to chinese yuan but now he is saying that we are willing to give concessions to china if it helps diffuse the north korean nuclear crisis so this is his stand now about nato you should know it's an intergovernmental military alliance it was established signed in 1949 so it comprises of 28 member countries across north america and europe the latest entrants were in 2009 albania and croatia from europe so it's a collective defense system means if any one country is attacked means all of them will come to the rescue if there is any external party attack so this is there three nato members are also permanent members of un security council that is us uk and france 
headquarters is in brussels one condition is there in nato that members should have defense spending of at least 2% of gdp so this is the requirement but this is not fulfilled by countries you can say only 5 of the 28 members meet this target of 2% of gdp on defense spending so this is a fact and three are of course the permanent members here the next is march exports climbed 27.6% so exports this is again monthly commerce ministry data which comes up so in the month of march it shows that exports have grown by 27.6% but imports have also grown so imports have grown by much more you can see 45.25% growth you don't have to remember these facts these percentages because this will come every month but then the trade deficit is widening so if exports are growing imports are growing at a much faster pace because of which the trade deficit means difference between imports and exports so that has widened so this is the case oil imports have also rose by 101.4% so that is also there so wto has forecasted global trade in 2017 will grow at 2.4% growth rate so this is its forecast the next is center aims to auction coal blocks so this is the auctioning of coal blocks which will take place for commercial mining now in december 2017 as it, it is expected so this would end the monopoly so presently coal mining is the monopoly of P, the state psu as such so now that, that would end so india has around 70% of its power generation fulfilled by coal so coal accounts for so because fuel is used for vehicles as such so power generation is through coal 70% of it so we want to boost domestic output to cut down on imports on this aspect as well so this is there so the target is to produce 1 billion tons of coal by 2020 so this will take place if commercial mining is also open up next is rbi tightens norms on bank performance so this is an important news which has come up now so this is rbi norms coming in so it has come out with a revised prompt corrective action framework so what is this prompt corrective action framework this is for banks so there are three thresholds which have been listed out in this framework so if the banks breach these thresholds so these thresholds are based on you can see capital which they have the net non performing assets which they are having with them profitability of these banks and also the leverage ratio the capital adequacy and other ratios so what happens is that if the threshold which has been decided if it is breached then there will be restrictions put on them if the third threshold finally means every threshold breach means more restrictions the third threshold breach can also result in the rbi calling for merger of this bank with another bank or even shutting down of the bank so that these are the drastic steps which can be taken now so this will come into effect from 1st april 2017 it has been put into effect it will be reviewed every 3 years so presently the details of the banks will be taken financials of the banks means for the year last year 2016 17 financial year so you can see the thresholds the first threshold will be triggered if these conditions are met so this is regarding capital adequacy ratio or how much percent it is the capital liquidity tier 1 capital ratio net non performing assets so you can see 6% means if they are if there is just 6% first threshold can be triggered leverage ratio is given then negative return on assets if there are negative return on assets for two consecutive years then also threshold one bit will be triggered so this is there if breach of threshold one takes place then it will invite restriction on dividend distribution or even require parents of foreign banks to bring in more capital so this first threshold breach second threshold breach again see capital adequacy ratio here criteria falls down so if these are then breached so three year consecutive years of negative roa even net np is shown as if it's breaching 12% leverage ratio so this happen second threshold breach then it will result in restrictions on expansion of branches and also higher provisions will be called then third breach the last breach will happen when again you can see net performing assets non performing assets go above 12% even negative return on assets are there for four consecutive years so if these things take place then restrictions imposed will be in addition to the restrictions in first and second threshold plus even management compensation would be called for or director's fee will be you know put down and then the special audit will be called for restructuring operations and activation of recovery plan would be brought in so that is what the rbi says it says that the promoters of bank can also be then asked to bring in new management or even they can supersede the bank's board 
So these corrective actions will be taken if third threshold is reached. So banking system regulation has been strengthened now. And the last news item is first image of dark matter web captured. So this is the dark matter bridge, a web-like superstructure connecting galaxies together. So this is expected to be existing. But it has been predicted for decades now. But it has been first time captured. This is the first composite image coming forth. So this is the dark matter bridge. So that is it. Thank you.